you were mentally when you go on court every day and you don't complain when you play bad, when you have problems, when you have pains. You put the right attitude, the right face. You were not negative about all the issues that happen. If I'm playing bad, if I have uh, physical problems, you go on court every day with the with the passion to to keep practicing. You know that that's that's the the mental work. You know that's uh, something that um, I did I did during all my career. After winning another title in Rome in 2019, the Spaniard summed up in a few sentences what the psychological attitude should be to become a great player. Oh, that's sensational! How many times has Nadal managed to win matches that seemed compromised or come back from more or less serious injuries or win where it seemed impossible to do so? Many. Really many. If there is a necessary condition for becoming a top player, it is a psychological profile of trainability that allows the child and the subsequent athlete to train regularly, to express intensity and give his best on every shot, to be able to be focused on goals and manage the emotional aspect of competition. It may be a skill that is partly innate, partly built of the court, but the most important part of this is built on the court, day after day, pushing yourself close to your limits, even when there are problems, you play badly or you have a physical pain. The athlete has two thresholds of fatigue tolerance that act as a filter for the training parameters. The physiological one depends on the level of training, but you will almost never touch it in a real match, because before reaching a real state of fatigue, as can happen to a marathon runner, errors will increase. And even if we are a professional capable of squeezing ourselves and limiting errors, reaching the physiological threshold is not functional to the training process. Well, because it leads to an increase in chronic fatigue, reducing adaptation and drastically increasing the probability of injury. Maybe Nadal has exceeded this limit every now and then. The fatigue threshold we most often deal with as players is the psychological one, which has strong individual differences and it is set by the subject based on his or her experience with states of stress and pain. Obviously, it needs to be trained, and Nadal has pushed his resilience limit further day after day, allowing training both in terms of intensity and volume. I propose you a very simple practical exercise. Think about when you find a difficulty, something that you didn't like because of how it was structured or that you couldn't overcome. Did you feel disappointed? Were you unhappy? Did you ask for help? Or did you face the obstacle with curiosity and the desire to overcome it? Did you welcome it as an opportunity? This is the best mental training a player can do. Oh yes, there we go. The mental strength of the tennis player is not built with formulas or magic mantras, but by facing difficulties with curiosity and challenge, because they are opportunities to become a stronger player and a stronger person. This is not a speech against the mental coaching, let's be clear, but against the easy solutions and those who propose them. The help of people who are competent in the psychological field can be an additional useful element, but the daily dimension is the true fertile field for mental strength. It's a ninth title for Rafa in Rome and a record-breaking 34th Masters 1000 trophy. Sensor. See you next time.